Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be reviewing the Power Ray Nintendo GameCube style controller. Now this is the last of the three major brands of third-party controllers uh, made out there in the GameCube style. Of course you have those no-name brands available on eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, but if we're talking about official recognized Nintendo third-party controllers, this is the last of the available controllers made out there. So we're going to be reviewing it today. As usual, we're going to be reviewing it as an everyday controller. So not only focused on Smash Brothers, but really as an everyday controller as I did for the other ones. But don't worry, we're going to be doing a direct Smash Brothers only comparison for all the available controllers, uh, the GameCube style controller shortly. And I was waiting to finish up this last review to get that ready for you guys. Also, on a quick side note, I just wanted to apologize because I made a mistake in one of my previous reviews of, uh, I believe it was the Hori Pad style controller. I said that the reason that the uh, Nintendo GameCube style controllers were synonymous with Smash Brothers is because the first Smash Brothers game came on out on the GameCube. I was really, really mistaken. It was on the Nintendo 64, and I don't know why I just forgot about that game when I was making that review. Uh, most likely because I didn't get into Smash Brothers till the GameCube era uh, and I think that most people uh, really where Smash Brothers exploded was in the GameCube era which is why Smash Brothers Brawl for most of people out there is synonymous with the GameCube style controller and why even today the tradition you know is ported over to the Nintendo Switch of using this type of controller for playing Smash Brothers. And also, just before we get on with the review, I just want to thank everyone out there for liking and subscribing in the last few months. It's been a super month for the channel. We've been getting a lot more views than usual. And I just want to invite all of you out there who really like the content to keep smashing that like button and subscribing if you aren't already and activating the notification bell, of course, uh, just because it's really important to keep the channel growing and to help me make more videos for all of you out there. Now that we got all that out of the way, Let's get on with the review, so let's go move into a close-up and take a look at what this controller offers. So first thing is just a quick look at the box, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but it's a pretty uh, simple uh, box for this controller. You have the Power A branding, you have an image of the controller we have here, a couple of quick side glances, you see different aspects of the controller on the side and on the back they indicate the basic functions of the controller. So nothing special about the box, it's a little beat up here because mine uh, seemed to have been repackaged before it was sent to me, but uh, other than that, pretty simple box. Now if we move on to the controller. Now this is a wired controller. The reason you don't see a wire here is because the wire is actually uh, detachable which is something that is always really positive. I really love having detachable wires. It really makes transporting the controller much, much easier. So the only disappointing thing is that once again, um, Power has opted for a micro USB connector rather than a USB type C. So that is a little bit disappointing because that does mean that if you have a pro controller or any other type of controller, you will have to drag around two different wires. Um, so it's a little disappointing on that end. And USB, micro USB is known to be more fragile than USB type C. However, on the upside, what Power Aid did do that is actually positive is that if you look, the connector is actually pretty deep in there. What that means is that the way they've designed the connector, it's supported by the frame of the controller and it's actually quite solidly in there and there's no risk of breaking off just the end of the attachment. So that, however, is a positive side. Now what I actually brought into frame here is a original style GameCube controller, which is the top one. This is the Power A. You can see because of the center console buttons that are different. And I just wanted to show you how it is an exact copy of the original GameCube controller. For someone who wants the exact original feel of the original GameCube controller, this is actually the closest controller you can get while still having all the input buttons you need for the Nintendo Switch. because. Yes, adapters do exist for this. However, if you didn't know, there are not two shoulder buttons here at the top, unlike this controller here. Uh, and also, uh, the D-pad is quite a bit smaller on the two controllers. But other than that, physically, they're almost identical and the feel is very similar between the two controllers. Uh, we'll be getting to this one in the review and we'll be uh, comparing all because there are adapters for using a traditional GameCube style controller for games like Smash Brothers or games that don't need 
both shoulder buttons but we'll be getting into that like i said when we'll be comparing them because today what i really want to do is make this controller shine and focus on it now as i just said we can really tell that what power focused was giving you the closest copy possible of an original gamecube controller while having all the interface buttons you need to use it with a nintendo switch button so you've got your plus minus you've got your home button and you've also got your capture button but other than that, everything is set up exactly like an original GameCube controller. And they've copied everything so down to a T that they've even copied the analog feel of the rear trigger buttons. Basically, if you look, there's a lot of travel to them. And we'll be getting to that in a few seconds because it feels exactly like an original GameCube controller or very, very close. But at the same time, there is a little bit of a downside to that fact as the Nintendo Switch normally doesn't recognize analog inputs and they are not actually analog buttons nonetheless. They feel like that but they aren't actual analog buttons, they are digital buttons. But other than that, the feel is exactly the same as a GameCube controller. It just is a little bit lighter. And this is something that I've mentioned in other Power A reviews. Power A controllers are always very, very light. Uh, however, it, when you get the wireless versions, because there's a battery in them, there's a little bit of weight added to them. But I would really appreciate in their wired controllers if they would put a little bit of weight, especially at the bottom here. Because when it's attached to the console, there's actually quite a bit of drag from the top where it's connected. And the controller is actually very light. Other than that, however, uh, there are no special functions on this controller. So there's no turbo, there's no added buttons. It's really, really made to simulate a traditional GameCube controller. So other than that, I'm going to show you guys the back, but I mean, function wise, it functions like a standard controller. There's no rumble, there's no motion control, and there's no NFC compatibility either on this controller. So feature wise, it is pretty simple. Okay, so here we are set up with my Switch Lite. The controller's plugged in through my Hori base. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna test the inputs because there's something I wanna show you guys and it's something that's gonna come up in this review and I also already pointed to it slightly. The fact that the buttons at the back here simulate analog triggers. Well, we're here on the uh, button test screen and I've gotta say that this controller feels really good button-wise. Like basically every button responds really well. Even the D-pad feels pretty good. Shoulder buttons, face buttons, everything feels perfect. And Power Ray, I actually really like how their buttons feel. They're responsive, they're, they, they feel good, and they don't feel mushy. However, what Power Ray has done by trying to simulate the original analog buttons from the Switch. And let's just clear the screen here for a second so that you guys can really see what I'm trying to talk about. Basically, they tried to simulate the feel of analog buttons, but they used digital buttons. What that means is that basically, if you look at the button here, all of this travel doesn't register anything on the console. What registers is the last little press. And that's the same for both sides of the shoulder buttons. Basically, 90% of the travel on the button doesn't register a button. It's only the last 10%. And although that feels authentic towards a GameCube controller, if you're playing a game where you have to do multiple presses of the rear buttons, it's actually feeling really, really bad because 90% of your travel isn't registering. So if you try to play like an FPS game with this, this button really feels awful. So although it feels authentic towards a, a GameCube style controller, the reason they were like that on the GameCube style controller is that they were analog buttons that registered the degree to which you were pressing the button so that in racing games, you could press the gas a little or you could press it a lot. However, in today's game, since everything is digital, except for maybe one exception that I know of, this is, completely useless travel on the button and it feels authentic but it actually is a detriment to the controller in my opinion. Other than that though, like I said, the buttons feel great. But unfortunately when we're going to get to the actual scoring of the review in a second, you're going to see that this fact unfortunately really hurt the controller in a couple of categories. 
Now, as we're gonna start the scoring of the controller, uh, I'm gonna be giving the gist of basically the explanation of how I'm scoring the controller, but if you guys want an in-depth explanation, I'm going to be linking above a uh, video that I made that basically describes in really details how I evaluate controllers and how I score them to be able to give them their final rating. Okay, so now we get to the scoring of the controller. And pretty much, uh, we're gonna start with the build quality and general feel of the controller. And on this point, I'm gonna be giving this controller a three out of five. Because although I don't have any uh, worries about the build quality of the controller, it feels solid, it feels well built, the buttons feel good. The problem, as every other Power A controller, is it just feels too light to me. I, ra I rather have a controller with a little bit of weight to it, and that's just the reason why it can't hit that four or five out of five in this case, uh, is the fact that because it's so light, it feels cheaper than it actually is. I don't have doubts that the plastic is good quality plastic, but when it feels so light, it gives you the false impression maybe of a cheaper build. Now for features and aesthetics, unfortunately this controller is once again not gonna score very high, it's only gonna be getting a three out of 10. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's a wired controller, it doesn't have actually any features, it doesn't have rumble, it doesn't have NFC, it doesn't have motion controls, uh, basically it's a bland controller. It has all the inputs you need to play any game and it simulates perfectly the feel of a Nintendo GameCube style controller, which is why I'm giving it sort of an extra point there. But other than that, uh, unfortunately the Nintendo GameCube style controller is really only hitting a three out of 10 because even aesthetically, and it's, I'm getting it an extra point because it is the one that simulates the GameCube style controller the most, but it's also Power A is the company offering the least variety aesthetically for pleasing designs like themed controllers or whatnot compared to the other two manufacturers uh, that are available out there on the market. And it's just disappointing because in every other style of controller, Power A is actually the company that offers the most variety. It's really like they popped out a GameCube style controller, copied the Nintendo GameCube, but then just forgot about their controller. So now we get to our first gaming category, which is FPS and action games. And unfortunately, this controller does not shine in this category. I'm going to be giving it a four out of 10. And the major reasons why, and we pointed to one already, is these shoulder buttons. As soon as you're trying to play an FPS game where your triggers are the shoulder buttons, it just feels awful. Trying to pop off quick single shots with this when 90% of your travel doesn't register just feels awful. And secondly, since there is not a second thumbstick, but rather a C-stick, trying to aim with this is a lot harder than with a traditional thumbstick, meaning that it's, once again, not the best for this category of gaming. And I know you're gonna be saying it's a GameCube style controller, why you, you know, you're slamming it for having a C-stick. Well, other manufacturers out there did give you an option where you can actually swap it out for a traditional thumbstick, which is why I am docking it for that here. And lastly, uh, in the FPS categories, well, the fact that it doesn't have any rumble, any motion, it just diminishes a little bit the experience you're gonna be normally getting in an action FPS game from those features. Now, if we move on to our second category, which are 2D side-scrollers and 2D platformers, well, this controller is actually gonna be getting a pretty decent score of seven out of 10. And why? Well, basically this D-pad being oversized compared to the traditional GameCube controller, and one of the only things that uh, Powery has actually changed about this controller, really actually feels pretty good. For platformers, when you don't have to be doing circular motions, this D-pad actually feels really good. So if you're playing Mega Man, if you're playing traditional 2D platformers, this is actually a pretty decent controller. And Although I didn't give it an 8 out of 10 because of those analog triggers in the back, because if you do need R2 and L2, once again, it just feels bad on this controller if you need multiple quick presses. Uh, it, I'm not docking it as much as in the FPS category, simply because not that many uh, 2D side-scrollers and platformers need those buttons, therefore it's not as much of a detriment in this category. Now we move on to our third category, which is 2D or traditional fighters. Sort of Street Fighter, Dragon Ball Z fighters, all those type of 2D fighting games. And once again, this isn't 
uh, the best controller, but it's not an awful controller. I'm going to be giving it a 6 out of 10. Slightly lower in the than the side-scroller because circular motions aren't as easy on this D-pad as some other D-pads out there, but at the same time, it actually feels better than a lot. So it's not an awful controller for these categories, but if that is your principal gaming type, so 2D fighters, not Smash Brothers, because like I said, these are Smash Brother de dedicated controllers, and they do pretty well in that category, but more like your Street Fighters, like I mentioned, this controller will be sufficient, okay, but once again, if you need those L2, R2 triggers and you need to press them quickly in succession, it's going to be getting on your nerves a bit, which is why I can't give it any higher than a 6 out of 10. Now we get to our last category, which are racing type games. So your Mario Karts, your Crash Team Racing and whatnot. And this is actually going to be the strongest scoring category for this controller, which will be getting an 8 out of 10 here. And why? Well. This is the first category where those L2 and R2 buttons generally won't be as annoying. Why? Because generally you'll be holding down the gas and you won't have to be doing rapid succession presses for these buttons. And all the other buttons feel very well. The thumbsticks are very responsive. And if you do come across that one game out there that does recognize the analog, well, unfortunately, since they use digital triggers in this, it won't be a plus because it still won't register the press till you've pressed it all the way in. If you want that, you'll need to go to a classic GameCube controller because those are actual analog buttons that will register the press before the last motion. So. Overall, this gives this controller a score of 31 out of 55 for everyday gaming applications. Now, just before we get on to the conclusion, uh, don't forget that this does not take into account its application specifically for Super Smash Bros. Because like I said, we're going to be reviewing these controllers solely on that game in a separate video. We're really looking at this controller as an everyday controller, and unfortunately, as an everyday controller, this is the lowest scoring controller out of the three uh, controllers we've tested that were GameCube styled. Uh, and you can check out my other reviews for those other controllers on the channel if you want. And I'll be giving you the reasons why those controllers scored higher. But like I said, the major point that you're going to take away is the lack of features on this controller and the fact that they chose to simulate those analog triggers in the back unfortunately really hurt this controller for everyday gaming applications in today's games on the Switch since the analog triggers aren't recognized by the Switch. So unfortunately, I really can't recommend this controller as an everyday controller. If you have enough money to buy this as a secondary controller only for Smash Brothers, we'll be seeing that in a separate review, but spoiler, it's a very decent and very good controller for Super Smash Brothers. But unfortunately, as an everyday controller for every type of gameplay, I would not suggest purchasing this controller. So I hope you guys liked my video today. Uh, affiliate links will be down below if you do want to pick up a Power A controller, because even though I gave it a so-so review, like I said, for everyday gaming, if you did want to pick it up for Super Smash Brothers, I'll be leaving the links to the controller down below. It'll help the channel out a bit. Uh, at the same time, please, as I said earlier, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps the videos a lot when you do. And subscribe if you aren't already and you would like to see more content. Don't forget to hit the notification button. And as in every video, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll catch you in my next one.